should you buy now or should you wait? Is this a good time to invest in Toronto real estate or you got to wait it out? Do you think price is going to go up or price is going to go down? Well, that's kind of the question everyone's asking me these days. So, Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto Real Estate Asian Mortgage Broker, Research Realty Search Mortgage. And today we're going to talk about should you buy now or should you wait? So the argument goes like this. This is uh, summer 2020. Uh, we're in the midst of some crazy wave of everything. Um, political, social, financial, you name it. Like everything is under the magnifying glass, right? And what we're seeing that the first couple of months this, this new situation has arised, um, everyone kind of froze and just didn't do anything. And now people are more relaxed, they're buying more, they're spending more, they're looking at real estate. I'm getting, I'm getting a bunch of calls every single day now. I'm not even advertising, I'm not marketing, just people call me. And people that call me are usually uh, two kinds of people. One is people I worked with before and they want to hear what I think about investing and they, I want to sell this, I want to buy that. And the other is new clients, nice to meet you, and new clients just heard of me with video, YouTube, through friends, referrals, and want to work with me. <clears throat> and everyone's asking the same question, both the new and the existing uh, clients, thank you all. Um, should we buy now or should we wait? Well, the argument goes like this. <clears throat> There's a couple of things to look at. First of all is the supply and demand. When you look at supply and demand, you see that the amount of units available in the market, a units is everything, it's condos and homes, okay? Any, any residential unit I'm talking about now, not about the commercial. Um, there's a, a shrinkage in listings, lots of shrinkage in listings because people just sat on their hands, they didn't want to do anything. Whatever listings did come up in the market, fetched a pretty good price. I mean, I, I already told you that $1,000 a foot is a, is a viable uh, price these days. Now, this can change, can go up and down, um, but for now, it's holding. I see assignments, not in the core, but outside of the core, say, West King West, Queen East, Riverdale, <clears throat> East uh, Blue Danforth. They're about a 1000 bucks a foot. Obviously, once you get to King West itself, once you get to Queen West itself, once you get to Yorkville itself, you're looking at... 1,200 a foot to 2,000 a foot, okay? So King West, a 500 square foot condo in a good building like Thompson, a fashion house will run you almost 600,000, give or take. You're looking at 11 to 1,200 a foot. Maybe a larger unit, like a 1,000 square foot unit will run you about 1,100 a foot, so 1.1 million. A penthouse always a, a, is a premium for the penthouse. And maybe you find a deal, <coughs> but Everything equalizes. You know, a unit on the low floor facing the inner courtyard never sees any sun. Maybe you get a bit of deal there, but not that much because there's just not many units available. Now, there are a lot of rentals available, and the reason is because a lot of the Airbnbs, people that bought condos to Airbnb them, there's just no traffic for Airbnb. That was all business transactions, business people flying, traveling. So Airbnb is gone and Porter is gone and anything that had to do with moving the executives and the managers um, from one place to there for all the meetings and stuff. And of course, that also means that the business, the restaurants that serve the business, so all the business areas are suffering. It's, it's, it, it's an ongoing chain. And the question, of course, is are we going to, as a society, are we going to come back to <coughs> working from the office <coughs> or working from another place now? You know, it's nice to say working from home, but you try to work from home and your home is your home and maybe you have a dog or a cat or someone else living with you. It could be an adult or a child or more than one. Not everyone can work from home. It just, it, sometimes it doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. You don't have an office at home. And if you didn't have an office at home, you have to have a second bedroom or a third bedroom or a fourth bedroom. It's not that easy. And I see in the media now, you know, if you're working from home, you're going to get paid less. Why? You're doing the same work. You should get paid, if anything, more for saving the company the office space. Just remember that. <clears throat> also, a great time for entrepreneurial spirit, and that has to that bring us back to the the question of investment. Should you buy now or wait? So look, <clears throat> when I look at the at the, at the cost performance, okay, a thousand dollar a foot, twenty percent down. Look at the carbon calculator. ConnorCalculator.ca or Google Conor Calculator, download and it'll show you the break even point. A thousand dollar a foot, most units will not break even on 20%, but will on 25 or 30 or 35, depending on the size of the unit and the price and all that stuff. Um, so a smaller two bedroom is always more efficient 
just how it is. The math works. A smaller two-bedroom is always more efficient because your cost to buy it is lower, so your mortgage is lower, your payments are lower, your tax is less, the condo fees are less. So if we're saving, say, $200 a month or $300 a month um, for a smaller two-bedroom and a large two-bedroom, but the rent's more or less the same. So if they're paying you, say, 2800 for the two-bedroom, whether it's 700 square feet or 900 square feet, they're still going to pay more or less the same price, but your cost is going to be different. That's why the common calculator is helping you to understand that. Um, <clears throat> but there's, there's two types of people buying right now. There's types of people not buying so much right now. Um, don't forget also that the people that used to buy all the new construction, just put the 15 or 20% down and flip it or rent it for a couple of years and then flip it, they're not buying that much right now because there's nothing for them to buy. There are very, very few launches right now. Uh, 28 Easterns, tell me I'm going to have that uh, this week and the next. <laughs> Somebody lost business, but it happens. Um, very, very few launches, and because you have very few launches, the, 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 the product supply is shrinking, so there's not enough. People still want to buy, people still want to invest. There's still a huge amount of money around. People are sitting on millions and millions of billions of dollars that they haven't, you know, they, they, they wanted to invest and they couldn't. So, <clears throat> now money has to go somewhere. That is the reason that people are still buying. They, there's a store of value, they gotta put that investment somewhere. If you're not gonna put it somewhere, what are you gonna do with it? Sit it, sit it in the bank at 1%, it doesn't make any sense. So the prices are more or less stable. If you're gonna buy a unit and you find a good unit that you like at today's price, Assuming we're not going to get like a crazy up and down, but more or less just stable, maybe for a year, and then it'll keep creeping up because we live in an inflationary economy. If the basics of our economy are staying, there's still nine, eight or nine billion people in the world, and they're only the roof, they're only to work, they're only to do their things, we're still in that space for them. Now, there will be some adjustments. If indeed um, less companies are going to be working from the office, uh, you may actually need bigger living spaces because, you know, where are exactly going to do that work? Where are exactly going to keep your client files? Even, even if everything is digital and you have no paper, you still need a place to work at home, and your home right now is not set up for it. So it's nice to say go work from home, but where exactly am I going to do that? It's already packed. It's already, it's already busy. It's not convenient. It's not... Uh, uh, it's it, 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 it just not convenient. It just think about working from home, the way your home is right now. Ah, like I want to come to the office, to a place where I work, and it's a clean desk, and I can just focus and do my thing. When I come home, I focus on other things, like making dinner or entertaining or whatever it is, okay? <clears throat> so I think once companies see people working from home, they realize that the efficiency is really going down and down and down. It, it really takes a special kind of person to work from home, and it takes a special kind of space to do it. And most people do not have uh, both or one of the two, and that's enough. So we will need space. We will need room. We will require uh, residential. But there's a lot of condos being sold in a thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollar foot. Those I'm curious what's going to happen with because they may be even less efficient in terms of ROI. So you're going to put more money down um, or lower your rent, but then your expenses are still there. So we're going to have to do some adjustments there. The comment calculator, you, you can check it out, and I can make a video if you're interested. Put in the comments. I'll make a video about that. Um, but the way it looks now, if you're looking to invest in something and you find the right unit and you find the right price, you should consider getting it. Now, if you think the world's going to come to an end and everyone's going to be bankrupt and you're going to scoop it all up, go for it. But usually, if something that, that big wave happens, the chances of you to buy anything are not that great anyways. We need a bit of kind of slight wave in the market. It helps. It helps regenerate. If it's too deep or too high, it, it, it really marginalizes a lot of people. So in order for us to have a good consistent market that it consistent means there's a lot of trading going on okay Car, like homes are 
switching hands, cars are switching, anything, people buying and selling stuff, that's humans. They like to, they like to trade. As long as we have active trade, I think we're pretty good. Um, I think prices are doing pretty well. A lot of the condos released uh, 29, 20, 18, 19, even 17. The developers paid a lot of money for that land. Now, if that land sat there and some family owned it for 50 years, obviously it was paid for a long time ago, and somebody that bought a land 20 or 50 years ago for $100,000 and sold it for 20 million, you know. <clears throat> so they, they've done really great, but if they want to make some millions, they can sell it for maybe 18 million now, or 15 million now for the 20, or for 80 million or 100. Or they can sit on it and not release the land and say, I'm just going to wait because that land, I already own it. I don't need to do anything with it. So <clears throat> if you're a landowner and you have a nice development site, would you release it right now? Would you let a developer buy it? Well, if you thought the market's doing great, you will sell it to a developer that also think the market's doing great to get to pay top dollar. But if you think the market's not doing that great, you're going to probably sit on it because you're already rich, you already have the money, you're already wealthy, you're already sitting on the land, you're just going to wait. A lot of landowners, the reason they have land is because land, there's no mortgage on land, you just buy cash and you sit on it. So you can see how uh, this game is played from various perspectives differently. A lot of people, they only consider me as a little investor, just want to buy one or two units, which is fine. But if you miss the big picture, you, will, you can't actually see the future. The future is to look at all the aspects, all the perspectives, and try to infer from there what's going to happen. So, and obviously, you're going to look at the picture, and you're going to, you're going to look at the information, I'm going to look at the information, even same information, we're going to come to different conclusions, that's also okay. Uh, my conclusion, and you make yours, is that we're more or less stable. Now, a lot will matter, a lot will really be determined with what's happening in the next few months, mainly September to December. Can we get the country back going? Can we get the world back going? And that, these are huge questions which are mostly political uh, and way beyond the medical. It, it's, there's a lot of politics going on, a lot of power struggles, right? So... <clears throat> You know, politicians, they want to keep their seat. They want, they want to get reelected so they can get that salary that you pay for. Me and you, we all pay for them. So their interest is to make you happy so you vote for them again. Because if you're angry, you're going to vote for another guy. So that, that kind of works in our short term. It works in our favor, long term. Every few years, put a new broom, try to make some changes. Probably better. But we'll see how it goes. For now, I'm saying that prices are stable. There's very little supply. People are buying, people are calling, people are very interested. Uh, I got a call from Shagri La yesterday. I got a call from King West. I got a call for West King West. I got a call for Yorkville. I got a call for a house. It's moving. I'm good. You're good.